Alison Sargent joins me on the set now to take a look at what the papers are saying. Hi, Alison. Hi, Jeannie. You're going to start focusing here in Europe, where French papers are taking a look at the president, Emmanuel Macron's trip to the Vatican. He is meeting the Pope Francis for the first time. Um, Francis' Catholic paper, La Croix, says that this is a visit is, that's going to calm Francis' tension with the Catholic Church. Tension that La Croix says developed under um, Macron's predecessor, Francois Hollande. He was an atheist, very, very committed to secularism, or laïcité, as we talk about in France. Macron, in contrast, identifies as agnostic and decided actually to get baptized when he was a schoolboy. He's also caused some controversy back in April. You might remember he said he wanted to repair the bond between the church and the state. People really saw this as a violation of France's laïcité. One of his rivals at the time actually called him a little priest. Um, in that vein, France's left-leaning paper, Libération, is making fun of Macron today. You can see they've tracked down a photo of him with his hands in the prayer position. Um, and this headline here reads, I praise you, François, which is what the French people call the Pope Francis. Now, another visit is making headlines today. That's Prince William, who is in Israel. Right, he is the first ever British monarch to make an official state visit to Israel. UK paper The Jewish News reports actually that Prince William was treated to tea and scones when he arrived in Tel Aviv on Monday, so they're trying very hard to make him feel at home. On the front page, the paper calls it a moment 70 years in the making because, of course, Israel turned 70 years old this year. Um, other UK papers, though, are showing a little bit less enthusiasm. You can see this is it's all the way, the story's all the way on page 13 of The Guardian. It's on page 3 of The Daily Telegraph. Um, it is on the front pages in Israel, though. The Jerusalem Post says um, that the previous lack of a formal visit had really rankled Israelis for years. Um, now, Prince William is set to meet both the Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, and the Palestinian leader, Mahmoud Abbas. And the Jerusalem Post says, you know, this is a complicated region for any diplomat, but especially complicated for Prince William to navigate because of the UK's role in the creation of the state of Israel. And they say, really, his every step is going to be under scrutiny. Well, that visit has already caused some controversy with Israelis themselves because of the British government's decision to refer to the occupied Palestinian territories that are on the prince's agenda. This wording really rankled a lot of people um, in Israel, although the left-leaning paper Haaretz is saying that it's a fake controversy, really, because, as they point out in this article, Britain has always referred to the Palestinian territories as occupied. It's just part of their terminology. And in this analysis piece, they say what matters is that even though uh, the territories are occupied, well, the royal carriage is still coming. Um, and they say that is seen as a significant achievement for many in Israel, since the UK had until now refrained from making official visits as long as no progress was being made in the Israeli-Palestinian peace process. And the paper says Netanyahu is going to use this visit as evidence that Israel is not in danger of being diplomatically isolated over its policies toward the Palestinian territories. Um, meanwhile, Jeannie, speaking of the peace process, the Israeli press is also reporting today that Vladimir Putin has invited both Netanyahu and Abbas to attend the World Cup final coming up in Russia. Now, staying with the World Cup, it does seem that people just can't keep the politics out of the football, something that we also saw over the weekend in a match between Switzerland and Serbia. All right, Gina, I don't know if you followed this story, but basically um, two players from the Swiss team who, who were ethnically Albanian celebrated goals that they scored by making a nationalist gesture. This is called the eagle, the double, uh, the two-headed eagle hand gesture, which is a national symbol of Albania. Uh, both players were born in Kosovo, where Serbia led a violent crackdown on the Albanian population in the 1990s. And this gesture was seen as a provocation of Serbia, and Serbia actually called on FIFA to ban these players from the tournament. Uh, FIFA decided on Monday not to do so, and you can see here on the front page of the Swiss paper La Regione, um, they report that the players have been acquitted almost. Now, they say almost because they have been issued fines of 8,700 euros, um, and the Serbian Football Association, meanwhile, has also gotten a fine for the behavior of their fans during that same game. Now, this hand gesture didn't just upset their Serbian opponents. It also created a lot of anger in Switzerland itself. Right. It really divided the country, and you can see this quite literally in a cartoon from the Tribune de Genève today. Um, we see the cross on the Swiss flag there is splitting into that two-headed eagle of the Albanian flag. Uh, meanwhile, the paper Le Ton calls it the black eagle that questions Swiss identity, and they explain how it sparked a big debate in the country about integration. A lot of people in Switzerland felt that the gesture showed a loyalty to Albania over Switzerland. It also created tension with Swiss people who have Serbian origins. 
Um, others, though, defended the players. They said, look, you can be loyal to two countries at once. Basically, the paper concludes nationalism and football combine into an explosive cocktail. In the meantime, FIFA is doing its best to try and make sure that those explosions don't go off. And it's actually issued a warning to English fans ahead of its upcoming match. Right. On Thursday, England is going to be playing against Belgium, which we all know is the seat of the European Union. This is going to be the first time the two teams have faced off since the Brexit vote. And the British press, as you can read in The Sun, has dubbed this match the Brexit Derby. They're reporting also that FIFA has warned English fans that they will be fined if they're caught singing pro-Brexit chants during the game. And there is a precedent for this, actually, Jeannie. During the Euro here in France in 2016, English supporters were heard chanting things like, F off Europe, we vote voted out. And meanwhile, at this World Cup, just last week, English fans got into trouble um, for chanting anti-Semitic songs. So just proof that football can really bring out the very, very worst. It certainly can. Thanks so much for that, Alison. Alison Sargent there with that look at the Press Review. And you can get a closer look at the Press Review, of course, on our website. That address is France24.com.